Right, today was Dauphiné TT. I'm not going to go through tech, but I'm going to go through some pacing and numbers. Maybe this will be interesting. I don't really know why I'm going to cover this video, but I think it's going to be good. So, anyway, the results. Remco won. Vishman did well. Jorgensen and Poggy not as well. Uh, and then Lipovic, a big ride as well. And then a couple others like Dunbar. Actually, surprisingly well. A lot of people don't upload power. But anyway, this is what we're going to go through. This is the segment. It's not the full segment, but it's it's a good enough amount of the segment. Jorgensen, Poggy, they've all uploaded, obviously. And then we've got some other people with power numbers further down. So, first of all, we're going to go through Jorgensen and Poggy's comparison. Now, this doesn't actually start at the very beginning. You can see here, that's where the segment starts. So, we're missing the first kilometer, probably, considering that... This uh, this file actually does start about 11k, so maybe it's not the privacy zone is not too bad. But anyway, so we miss 800 meters on this end, uh, and probably yeah, like a couple hundred meters at the end, so maybe a kilometer out, roughly. Anyway, so what can you actually see? Uh, so it's flat, steep, downhill. So you need to put the power out first half of the TT for sure. Anyway, so going into the first climb, Pog, Jorgensen, and Amarai, all pretty similar actually. So that's kind of interesting. The wind may have changed, but they were all off pretty late, so shouldn't be too different, especially Poggy and Jorgensen. Uh, they're very similar time. So anyway, no massive differences. Then on the climb, uh, Amarai, who is the light blue, the colors are all up here. So black Jorgensen, pink Poggy, and uh, light blue for an Amarai. So you can see over the top here, uh, Amarai's lost 23 seconds. Again, not surprising, Jorgensen and Poggy are very, very, very good climbers. Uh, what's interesting really with Poggy is the time he loses is actually quite, uh, is a lot near the end. He loses 10 seconds in the running, which is kind of rogue. Uh, but apart from that, he's actually very similar. If we look at the time differences here, uh, he lost 9 seconds. So he may have lost some on the start, which we actually don't get. You can see it's 9 seconds here as well. So it's roughly right. But again, you can see he's actually pretty close until the very final 2 kilometers. So kind of interesting of the pacing strategy again maybe cracked on more in the second half we will see Bruno Mai actually like obviously speeds mega high he holds it pretty consistently uh so he's 23 seconds here he only is like a little bit further back on this part and then again loses it towards the end so maybe Jorgensen actually left a lot in the tank at the end and can fly but what we're going to see is some different pacing strategies so uh Bruno Amarai is the first one I'm going to go through because I don't think this was optimal so he did 409 watts on the way out, so it, maybe his power meter's fried, because he went the same speed as Pog, right, and Jorgensen. 409 watts, so you're like, okay, that's not actually that crazy for him, Then, because he averaged for the whole thing 447 watts. So then on the climb, he bangs out 508 watts. He still lost big, big time. So if we look on the on the segment itself, we'll be able to see exactly how much time he lost, but Bruno MRI lost about 17 seconds to Jorgensen. He did 508 watts, so he probably couldn't do a harder effort. Like, he's just going to lose that time. So, you know, it's almost impossible to win. If you're going to lose 20 seconds on the climb, it's, it's, it's not great. The thing that I don't really get is this second half of the TT. He seems to have just not gone out hard enough because he's banging out 430 watts. We're doing 58k an hour. Like, it's just not an effective use of time. So the conclusion from this is either he probably should have gone harder on the climb if he could have done. He definitely should have gone harder on the first part. Uh, and then at the very end, he actually has a serious growing up. He bangs out 600 watts the last 40 seconds. So again, it's like... It's somewhat useful. It is 0.6%. It's slightly uphill, but still, like, in terms of looking at where he's putting the power out, it is interesting that he does do big, big numbers. I mean, he's pedaling at 500 watts at 84k an hour. I mean, I just don't, I don't know. I think it, if you saw Poggy, he didn't pedal. Uh, but yeah, so that was pretty interesting. Again, like, why he did that, no one knows. Uh, but that was the pacing strategy. T this is Thibaut Gernalak. Again, good TT. RK have really grown up at TTs. If you just look at their Romandy results, they had some crazy results. So again, we'll go through the average. So his average was 412. You can see, again, the first part, he does a positive split. 420 watts. Again, makes sense. Because although it looks kind of downhill, it's actually 0%. He's sub 50k an hour, so wants to be cracking on there. On the climb, 481 watts. So... He's going to lose some time on the climb to Poggy again. That was 4.44. So that's not ideal. If we look if we look here... Uh, oh, actually, sorry, I've lost it. Anyway, he has lost some time to Poggy on the climb, but kind of like to be expected, maybe not as much uh, as Amarai. 4.44, I think Poggy did it in 4.20. So he's like slightly quicker. 
Uh, oh no, he's actually way slower, sorry. He's way, way slower. So again, maybe he didn't crack on him off, but he did do 481 watts. But then the interesting thing is on the downhill, he did way less watts. And this kind of makes sense. You can see he's not pedaling at 85k an hour. Like that's just not going to gain you much speed. And even on this downhill part here, like he's doing 400 watts at 60k an hour, which probably isn't great, but at least like he's not doing more watts on the downhill. And at the end, uh, yeah. So like if you look where he finished, they finished very similar, but like the amount of power MRI was doing on the downhill, it just didn't really gain a lot of time. Like you think MRI was so much faster on the climb and yeah, and probably the flat part, but he just didn't really gain much. The other one we can look at is Alexei Lutschenko. He also posted his power data, uh, which is, I don't really understand why they don't just, they use some weird Strava thing. Uh, hang on a minute, sorry, let's uh, we can look here. But his pacing, I think is, it's like the most efficient in my, in my view, because okay, like, yeah, he's not competing for the win, but you can see like he's doing 51K an hour, 390 watts. It's pretty quick. Then on the climb, he bangs out like 480 watts for four and a half minutes. Again, like we look on the climb segment, he's not, He's not absolutely flying here. Um, again, 446, so 26 seconds slower than than Pogan. You look at Amorai actually like a fair amount slower. Uh, and if you look at the overall, like he is slower than Amorai by 10 seconds, but you think the climb, he loses a decent amount. The thing with uh, with Lutschenko that I think was, was clever was actually, if you look at this part here, he does almost zero watts. He averages from when he actually starts pedaling eight minutes 340 watts average is 57k an hour like that's efficient like he's just doing 340 watts down here and he's absolutely charging along and it kind of makes sense like why i assume he must be more aero because he's not doing mega watts he's doing 58k an hour 336 watts and here he really cracks on so you kind of look at it like in two halves 420 watts for the first 13 minutes and then 344 and you can see the speed difference 56k an hour which obviously here is 39k an hour so I think that was like in terms of pacing pretty smart uh most of these people obviously don't have power data but it's kind of interesting to see how people pace and how like even though maybe they're slower on the climb if you use a downhill to your to your advantage uh maybe you can maybe you can make up more than you want i think we'll just go through the, the climb actually itself because there's kind of some rogue ones like archie ryan you wouldn't necessarily expect would i mean he didn't have a mega tt result uh if we look at him on motorcycle stats he finished two and a half minutes down, but he absolutely flew up the up the climb, 400 watts. But he's a small boy; he can't be much over 50 kilos. So again, it's kind of like interesting to see what it's done. And like Fred Wright actually didn't climb that well on the on the climb; he lost 27 seconds. But then to Poggy, but like overall, he didn't lose crazy amount more than that on the other part. So again, it's just obviously if you're heavier rider, it's always going to be more difficult. But yeah, that's basically my kind of analysis of the TT. That uh, where you want to put your power down, Jorgensen and Poggy. Not where people thought he didn't actually lose as much at the beginning. It was more in the second half. Again, this is to, compared to Jorgensen, but Jorgensen was obviously again further back than Remco for on the on the second half. Sorry, on the first split and obviously the the final split. But anyway, I hope this video is interesting. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.